Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll be understanding cause and defects for uh, casting. So if you do not have a background for casting, what the process is and what all things are involved, what are the procedure to make a casting, then you, I would suggest you go first back to understand the casting as a process and then come back to understand what are the the possible defects which can occur during a casting process and what are a possible remedies. So initially we'll be going through very simple uh, defects. So just names would be enough for you to understand. So the first one is blow holes, which are usually on convex cut casting surface. Uh, and uh, they can be removed by proper venting or adequate permeability. And permeability is uh, is related directly related with the content of mixture. Now the second is gas holes. So they are also nearly spherical shaped gas bubbles when excessive amount of gas is dissolved in liquid metal. So that's uh, so while preparing the liquid metal, we should take care that there is not excess of gas in dissolved in it. Then the third is porosity. So very small holes uniformly dispersed throughout casting. And when there is decrease in amount of gas solubility during solidification, porosity can occur. So this means the, the casting is not, is having some porosity in it. That's what it, it means. The fourth one is drop. So that, that drop is with respect to the mold sand. So drop of the mold sand from cope or otherwise overhanging projections into the mold. And the possible remedy is by using sand of adequate strength. So the, the sand would drop only if it is not having adequate sand, uh, strength. So we should have a sand uh, or the mixture of sand which has adequate strength that it can hang properly at its place or we can use gaggers. Then the fifth is dross. Dross means light impurities on top surface of casting. Very simple thing. So it can be uh, remedied by, by carrying at pouring stage when we are pouring the metal we should take care and uh, the second option is use items such as trainers and scheme bob the sixth one is was so it means low projections on drag surface of casting commencing near the gate and it, it also means erosion of sand due to high velocity jet of liquid metal in bottom gating what does that mean is when we are pouring the the, the liquid metal through the gate, if that velocity is too high, it can erode the sand, and that was that what means as was washing of the sand on, of the mold. Seventh is buckle, which means expansion of thin layer of sand at mold phase taking place before the liquid metal is poured at the mold phase solidifies. What does that mean? Simple buckling. You know, we have a, a column, and if we are putting a lot of pressure on it on the top and bottom surface or holding the bottom surface and putting a lot of pressure on the top surface, the column will buckle. In the same way, if over here we have a layer of sand and we are putting a lot of pressure and it doesn't have enough support, then it will buckle. It can be solved by adding proper amount of volatile additives in sand mixture to make room for this expansion. Okay. The eight is penetration. If mold surface is, is soft and porous, liquid metal may flow between sand particles. Liquid metal flowing between the sand particles up to a distance in the into the mold. That we simple meaning penetration as a word means very simple, and it causes rough porous projections on the surface. Ninth is swell, so a swelling of the surface defect on vertical wall of casting. So there are four vertical walls on the casting. This and due to high hydrostatic pressure on sand, due to high moisture content in the sand. This is very simple, right? Hydrostatic pressure, because we are using green sand, there is some moisture content. And because of that moisture content, there would be some swelling. That is the hydrostatic pressure, uh, a horizontal force. Then this comes an important one, which is misrun. Liquid metal due to insufficient heat, start freezing before reaching the fast, farthest point on the mold cavity. So this is a serious problem. We should do proper calculations for this to not occur. So, and the remedy is heating metal 
much higher than the melting point of the liquid. So uh, we can think that since we have reached the melting point, the metal is in the liquid form and we can pour. But while we are pouring, the liquid is going to lose its heat. Its heat. So we should overheat the liquid metal to a sufficiently high temperature and then start pouring. So while pouring, even though it is going to lose some heat, till the till the liquid metal reaches the farthest point in the mold, it is not yet freezed. So it is not yet solidified. It is still in the liquid form. It can flow and reach all the corners of the mold. That's what uh, we should do. We should overheat. Then 11th is the cold set. It is also very important. Misrun in casting with gates. So cast at the center of casting. Misrun happening, the same thing happening with gates. So the misrun is a, a possibility when we have only single casting. Over here, cold set means when the misrun happens, when casting is with gates. There are a lot of multiple uh, products we will be manufacturing at the same time. So in, this, in that case, uh, we should pour the liquid metal from the center of casting. Then 12th, which is also important, is hot tear. That means crack that develops in casting due to high residual stresses. And residual stresses are usually thermal stresses in this case. Uh, 13th is shrinkage cavity, which is also important. And improper riser may give rise to shrinkage cavity. So we should make the riser design properly. 14th is shift, which is misalignment between two half of a mold or a core. That's, that is also very simple. We have two parts of a mold and if one of them is shifting, that is misaligned, then we'll have a, a bad casting. So these were the 14 casting defects and some of the possible remedies which I have discussed. If you have any queries, uh, do comment. Thank you.